What's up everybody? With more and more people talking about the inevitable slowdown or possible crash, why in the world would anyone buy a house right now in April of 2022? Well, today we're gonna take a look. We're gonna look at CoreLogic's latest article on the possible price decline in the near future, and also Redfin's latest housing market forecast and see what they have to say about what's happening right now. After that, I'm gonna show you some real data so we can see how the market can change over time. And finally, we're gonna take a look at some houses that were sold back in the day, made it through the recession, and then were sold more recently. So we can kind of see that if you hold on to your house for long enough, you'll get through every cycle. So let's just dive right in. Before we start, I do want to emphasize that real estate is local. So you need to check in with your local realtor to find out what's going on in your specific market. Okay, first let's take a look at CoreLogic's article published on March 16th about the potential risks of price decline in this market. Selma Hepp, a CoreLogic economist, starts off by saying that she's seeing prices reaching new highs and the market is showing few signs of slowing down in most of our country's metropolitan areas. She goes on to say the home price growth surged an annual 15% from 2020. This is triple the average gain seen in the decade prior. In 2022, CoreLogic thinks that the price gains are going to slow down and will average about 10% by the end of the year. But with all this rapid acceleration of prices, they do think there are some risks that some parts of the country we'll have to start reducing their prices. So let's take a look and see where CoreLogic thinks a price decline will take place. Rapid home price growth has led to overvaluation of home prices. For that, we look at the CoreLogic market conditions indicator, which provides a benchmark that indicates if a metro area's home prices are overly high compared to local household incomes. She mentions that certain areas are overvalued due to this rapid price growth. But even with these places that CoreLogic thinks are overvalued, she still concluded the risk of price decline still remains low. According to the December CoreLogic Market Risk Indicator, only 12 metro areas had a 50% probability of a price decline in the last 12 months. One third of the metro centers had a 10% or less probability of a price decline. If you look at their map, they do cite several areas in the US that have a high probability, about 50 to 70% of a price decline in the next 12 months. If you live in one of the areas that they noted here, please comment below and let us know what's happening in your area. Hep concludes that even though some of these areas are overvalued in their opinion, they still have a low risk of price decline. So although CoreLogic is more conservative than other housing market predictions, <coughs> Zillow, <coughs> they still see a price appreciation of around 10% by the end of 2022. It will be interesting to see if the specific areas that CoreLogic cited that they think will have a price correction in the next 12 months, if it will actually happen. So let's pivot over to Redfin and see what they're saying. According to Redfin's chief economist, Daryl Fairweather, he says that even with higher interest rates and higher prices, right now he says the prices have increased around 17% year after year to an all-time high, he still thinks that with a lack of inventory, it's gonna be a seller's market. In Fairweather's own words, he says that with so much uncertainty in the world and economy, it makes sense that homeowners are staying put. High prices and rising mortgage rates are a strong impediment even for homeowners who would ideally like to move to a better home. First time home buyers, on the other hand, are still seeking the security of home ownership despite the chaos of this market. And I'll even add to that, that all of the possible sellers that refinanced in the last two years and got an incredibly low interest rate and so reduced their monthly costs are now staying put. They may want to upsize or downsize and they've decided that it's just more efficient and economic to stay in their house, which also will then limit the housing inventory for new buyers. On March 17th, CNBC asked Redfin CEO Glenn Kelman what he thinks is gonna happen in the housing market. These conversations about affordability, about inventory shortages, about inflation, does it feel, and a Fed tightening in the midst of all of this, does it feel to you like housing is poised to take a leg lower? I think that's too strong too. It feels to me like prices will stay fairly strong. They're not going up 10% in my opinion. Uh, maybe they'll go up five, but I don't think they'll actually take a step down. 
You're going to see a slight increase in foreclosures because the moratorium has been lifted, but that is off ridiculously low levels. Most people are not over their skis. We're not going to see a bunch of distressed inventory hit the market. So I still think we'll be supply constrained at least through the first half of the year. So at this point, both CoreLogic and Redfin still see the market going up in 2022, just maybe not the same price appreciation as 2021. So I get it though, even with these companies like Redfin and CoreLogic and even Zillow saying that price appreciation is continuing to grow, there still is a lot of fear out there about the possibility of a market crash or a slowdown. And I have said in my previous videos, I don't think that this type of price growth is sustainable. I do see it slowing down at some point. But I still believe that if you can afford to buy a house now and plan on staying there, that it's a good time to buy. And I wanna show you some data so you can understand what I'm saying. So let's take a look at this house in Rockville, Maryland that first sold at the end of 2007. So the market here had already started to slow down a little bit from the crazy escalating years of 2004 and five, but it wasn't a market crash yet. We really considered the market crashing in 2008. So in October of 2007, this house sold for $625,000. If it had sold a year earlier, it probably would have sold for more, but let's just look at the data as we have it. Now, this same house, without doing anything differently, sold in 2010 for $612,500. The market had definitely crashed in 2008 and nine, as we all know, and in 10, it really wasn't much better. So the house went down in value. So the house stayed in the same family for the next 10 years. And now in June, 2021, just last year, when the market was doing great, sold for $765,800. And I've seen this house, no work had been done. It's just a matter of staying there with enough time for the market to go through its cycles. So let's take a look at this other house in Bethesda, Maryland. In 2009, it sold for $635,000. Eight years later, in 2017, it sold for $725,000. And just last year, the end of last year, it sold for $925,000. And one more example of the house in Bethesda that in 2009, it sold for $610,000. In 2016, it sold for $785,000. And in 2021, it sold for $865,000. And there are many examples of this. And my point is just that if you are buying in an up market, if you hold onto the house for a certain amount of years, you're gonna cycle through different markets, but hopefully you will always come out ahead because price appreciation is continuously growing, at least in this area of Montgomery County, Maryland and Washington, DC. I said at the beginning of this video, and I will repeat, you do have to check with a local realtor to find out what's happening in your area. Real estate is localized. I can't say this enough. So please, if you wanna buy a house today in 2022 and you can afford the monthly cost and you're planning on staying a while, don't let the fear mongers stop you. Because remember, interest rates are going up right now and prices haven't started to come down yet. So the more you wait, the longer you wait, the more expensive it's gonna be on a monthly basis. And if you buy now and rates go up and then eventually come down, you can always refinance your monthly number if rates go down in the future. But you're also building equity at the same time rather than giving a landlord the rent to build their equity. I know I've talked about a lot of different things today, so if you wanna talk about anything I've mentioned, just call, email, text. I'm happy to discuss the market with you and what I think is gonna happen, especially where I am in the DC, Maryland area. And if you are thinking about buying or selling and you'd like our help, rather it's local here or anywhere in the country, we'll help you find somebody that we think is a good fit for you. Just send us an email, we'll set up a Zoom and we'll get you started. And if you like this video and you got any value out of it, go ahead and smash that like button, comment below and subscribe. It helps us with the algorithm and keeps us going and motivated to make more videos. Thanks for watching, bye.